So today's video will have two parts. The first part is what happens in the beginning of the race, what happens right after the race, what you always see in the media, but what you don't see what actually leads to this. And that's going to be the ending part, which is part two of what actually happened prior to this race. So stay tuned, step by step, and I strongly suggest you just wait to the end. See you. This is what I love about this race morning. start and the race finish. officially done I'm just hiding from weather on mile 10 we got hail right now we turned into the rain so the marathoners are not uh, quite happy today I guess battling in the field I did better than I expected actually end up with uh, third place in my age group 839 pace better than i expected but dosa roses so tomorrow i'll tell the story about manure okay <laughs> at what happened, truly this is the part people mostly don't talk about. What really led to that race? And for me, until Saturday morning, I didn't know if I'm gonna be racing. When I got back from the trip early March, I came back with some sort of a virus and truly for the first week after that trip, I was really fatigued. So the training was hit and miss. I was feeling much better in the beginning of the week. And then Thursday and Friday was like off the cliff as well. I spent probably like 12 hours in bed each day, just trying to get some rest and be ready for the race. So I was truly happy to wake up and like, okay, I think I can do this today. Okay, I think I'm gonna run. Now, for me, I don't run to win. I don't compete with other people. I just compete with myself. And what I look at, I compare myself to my prior races. I see what I've done from the heart rate perspective, from the pace perspective, and from the power perspective. Yes, I do measure the power on a run. And what I have is, I have that little thing on my sticker, which is actually measuring the power on the run, similar to the power on the bike. Because truly you cannot compare different courses because of different elevation, but there are components you can really measure across. Did I push myself hard enough? Because sometimes, it's just your heart rate is up, but your power is really not. So you was, your body wasn't really prepared for the race and your heart rate is up, but truly you didn't crank the volume. So 
When I was getting in the morning for the race, I was looking at my last race back in 2022 half marathon, and I was looking at the power and the pace, and this particular one has truly different course. You're going through four miles of uh, relatively flat course, then five miles, you're going over five different hills, and then you go into the flat course back again, and obviously uh, from the top, you have a mile down. So my goal was, okay, I'm going to start in about high 148, probably for my first part. I'm gonna push the power to keep the pace around 840. That part will worked well. I didn't know what to expect from the hill, so I just set myself for the heart rate of 163 and power of 280. I didn't know what to expect from the pace, truly. But what I found exciting running this particular course that a lot of people were uh, struggling on the downhill. So they would get up, uh, you know, get ahead of me a little bit on an uphill but I was pounding downhill because getting to our new location hill, I run a lot on hills now. And that kind of gives me a, so to speak, an advantage, I would imagine. People kind of uh, save their legs going down the hill. I was racing down and I was uh, surprised to see the pace of like eight minutes, 43 seconds. Then downhill, uh, when I got to that mile 10, where you pretty much go in from the mountain to the lower end of the course, that mile, I felt that push in my leg. So the pace uh, got a little bit slower. I was recovering, so it was just at about a nine minute mile. And then when I got to the flat course, I like, okay, uh, this is the final push. That's how we race. We have to go with a negative split. I have to crank the volume now. So I was able to push my uh, power from 260 to just about 270 to 275 to like 295 at the final sprint. So the race ended up uh, being executed as I wanted. It might not have been the fastest trade I've done, but what I find important for me is the actual execution of how the rate progresses. First part, you build the momentum. Next part, you start building it up. And the final part, you push all the way. So, that was the race. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next one, which is now going into the triathlon season, going to be a duathlon. So, follow me on my channel just to see what that race outcome going to be. And let's grind together. I'll see you in the later episode. See ya.